Hey, Great Steel Nation, Sully, board shorts here for you. This is a topic that I really love, exercise, insulin, and glucose transport. Exercise is highly dependent on your ability to transport glucose into the muscle cell. So let's take a look at how that happens at rest and during exercise. So, we have a muscle cell membrane. So this is outside the muscle cell, this is inside the muscle cell. During exercise, we need glucose. Here's glucose. Where does it come from? Well, first of all, it comes from you eating, right? So that puts glucose into the blood. And also, importantly, glucose comes from the liver through two processes called gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis. So both of these things contribute to blood glucose level. But the glucose will not just diffuse into the muscle cell. It has to have a special signal and a special pathway to get into the muscle cell. In the muscle cell, we have something called glucose transporters. They're technically called GLUT4 molecules. They're a special protein that will allow glucose to get into the cell. But before that happens, there needs to be some sort of signal sent to the GLUT4 molecule. During um, an increase in blood glucose, right, there'll be a corresponding increase in insulin here, this little triangle molecule. And insulin will bind to the insulin receptor, which is shown here. The insulin receptor spans the muscle cell membrane, and it sends a complex signal through multiple pathways to the GLUT4 protein, causing it to translocate to the muscle cell membrane. And so now, as a response to insulin binding to its receptor, GLUT4 has translocated to the muscle cell membrane. And this will allow glucose to get into the muscle cell, where it can be used as energy for exercise. But what about exercise? During exercise, you don't want your blood sugar to drop, right? So exercise actually decreases insulin production. And this decrease in insulin production means a decrease in insulin signaling. But you still have to get glucose into the cell. This happens through a process called mechanotransduction. Mechanotransduction is simply a word that means some sort of mechanical stimulus that's transferred or transduced into a biochemical signal. Right? And exercise is one of the things that causes mechanotransduction of biological signaling inside cells. So in the case of exercise, you get a complex mechanotransduction event that works kind of like insulin. And it works through multiple pathways, some of which are still being elucidated by research. Calcium, AMK signaling, and so on. And some of these signals are not yet known. But the bottom line is, is that they result in GLUT4 translocation to the cell membrane so that glucose can get into the muscle cell. In other words, exercise works kind of like insulin. It's, exercise is a hypoglycemic agent that allows glucose to get into the muscle cell independent of insulin signaling. Now, the implications of this are profound. Obviously, if you're on a hypoglycemic agent and you take insulin or some other agent that lowers your blood sugar, you've got to take that into account if you're also exercising because now you kind of have two hypoglycemic agents on board. You have the exercise, and you have the hypoglycemic agent itself. More importantly, repeated bouts of exercise stimulating GLUT4 transports to the muscle cell membrane can result in an expanded GLUT4 transport pool inside the muscle cell. In other words, repeated exercise increases the amount of available GLUT4 transporters, which will make you more sensitive to mechanotransduction, and this is important. You need to transport a lot of glucose. Demand for glucose by the muscle cell increases up to 50-fold during exercise. So this will make you more sensitive to mechanotransduction. But it will also make you more sensitive to insulin. So exercise, by increasing the stimulation of this insulin-dependent pathway and expanding the GLUT4 transport pool, will also make you more sensitive to insulin because you have more glucose transporters to be activated to go to the cell membrane and increase glucose uptake. So the bottom line is that during exercise, glucose transport is largely insulin independent. And repeated bouts of exercise can expand your glucose transporter pool and make you more sensitive to insulin signaling even when you're not exercising. And that's good stuff. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.